You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. All right, Eddie. All right. Thank Christ we got some rosé. Oh, we've got rosé, baby. Big day rosé. Big day rosé. Drops tonight, 6 p.m. It's the greatest rosé ever made. And it helps to take the edge off. Or put the edge on. Well, put the edge on, but take the edge off for us today on what has been, you know, troubling. Troubling times. Thank you, darling. It's it's one of those days, punters and dribblers, where you go, well, I, you know, we are releasing the greatest fucking rosé of all time. Yep. And once you try it, you'll go, okay. They weren't talking shit. No, they weren't. Boys are on They one. were telling the truth. They were telling the truth. But then also, listen to that. Listen to that pause. Fucking no, it pause well. Cheers, Day Rose. Well. Hellosport.shop. 6 p.m. tonight. Hellosport.shop. 6 p.m. tonight. 6 p.m. tonight. Hellosport.shop. I repeat, Hellosport.shop. I repeat, Hellosport.shop. To us. To us. To Des. To Des. To the implosion of a great rugby league club. Now, as I sip. Fuck, that's good rosé. Oh, God, it makes the, like, I don't know what the tasty, the taste bud things are down here, but it makes them, like, quiver like they're coming. I tell you what's good about it, the finish as well. Yeah. Like, you, you finish, it finishes so well. But dude, I think it makes my taste buds come, though. Yeah. Like, I think that's the they feeling complete. I They complete. They've, like, blowing loads in my mouth. You know what's great about this, though, Tom? For the first time ever... I've achieved multiple orgasms. Because every time I sip, it happens again. You have another one. Yeah. That's like, I've never had that before. No. Multiples. Shout out to the driblets out there that can. But. Yeah. Not me. Not me. These, there are bar flies know, in this dude, place. And they're annoying me. Because we, there's just so much booze in here. Um, but none of it's open. No, I know. But the rosé is. They looked, the bar flies are getting horny for it. When the bar flies are up and about, you know it's good. So anyway, punters and dribblers. Big Day Rosé, limited release, limited amount, available. Don't miss out on the fucking the first ever Rosé drop of the HSP. I wouldn't be missing that. Not as we get it. Not, not as we... Uh, it was hot this morning. When I when I left the house today, she was warm as toast. Not as we meander so so eloquently into silly season. Yeah, we're dancing towards silly we're season. We're dancing, baby. You're going to want to have a fucking case of this shit on the go. So, Hello, sport. Shot. 6, 6 p.m. Hello available Sport. in six packs. Six packs only. Singles maybe later, but not now. Not six now. Packs. Six packs to start. Six packs. So, Manly have sacked Des Hasler. Now, I have... There are things to say. Mm-hmm. There are things to, to touch on. Yep. Let me just say this. And we kind of said it earlier in the week. We put up a post about it. If there is a reason... Beyond what I currently know to be true, that Des needs to be sacked and management just haven't told us about it and it comes out and they tell us and it makes sense, I'm happy for Des to be sacked. Like, if there's a reason why, it can't be his coaching because, again, we made the finals last year and we were a bee's dick off the finals this year. If there's something that's happened, like internally, there can't be the pride round thing because he had nothing to do with it. What is the reason for sacking him? I'm still yet to hear it. I also think it's worth saying off the top, nothing wrong with Anthony Seabold. The man, if he comes in and coaches the club, am I sad about it? Yes, but will I get behind Anthony Seabold? Eventually, yes, pending success. But like, they, there's no, there's no logical explanation for me right now from the management of the club, from anyone who's making decisions, that they're sacking Des for any other reason than they don't like him. And like, you saw Penn well, talking to Danny Widler the other night, Scott Penn. That looked like the most petty fucking bullshit I've ever seen. Look, I think it's it seems to me to be multi layered, right? There seems to be layers to this fucking beast. Now, off the top. It's not a secret that the Pens don't like Des Hasler. That's not a secret. That's a fact. Mm. That's a fact of life. Now, from an outsider's perspective, looking in, which is what I'm doing, it appears petty to me. It appears petty. Well, it doesn't seem to be rooted in any, like, tangible, measurable 
thing where it's like, oh, well, this is why he's getting sacked. Because he's not good, at, good enough. Now, throughout recorded history, Manly has had um, a club that is ruled by many stakeholders with many varying degrees of control and power that all have different agendas, opinions, and... Um, thoughts about where the club should go mm. pulling in all different directions that's been an issue fucking since day dot everyone's aware of that everyone's aware of the infighting at club level what has always reigned supreme what has always risen to the top is peninsula cream tom it's always risen to the top yep always risen to the top and that's why we've continued to win comps in the face of adversity in the face of board level infighting now it seems to me tom that once there was a bit of blood in the water, chum. Once this thing was fucking chummed up, and it was chummed up the moment that the women in league round was hijacked as pride round, and we know what happened. Then it was chum. There was already chum in the water now. Yeah. And then we lose seven in a row. More chum. Chum. Then fucking Des is supposedly locking the pens out of the bo- uh, out of the. Um, game out of the, the game, game and all that shed. sort of shit but even like as soon as the season finished it was oh the turbos hate cherry evans yeah chum but that's chum. but that's but that's but it seems like every faction is no, just coming but out that's and chumming the, faction, the water but that's exactly because they want they want that water chummed and they want it chummed because they want to push their own little agenda so if des right des has his own philosophy but maybe that doesn't vibe with what i want out of the club right? so i'm gonna put the club into shit into yes. turmoil chum the fucking waters just 100%. so i can advance my own causes this is succession shit it bro. is dude. well it's, it's it's house of dragon this is succession shit and it's it's why right it's why every three five eight years manly seems to run into this period where we fall off a fucking metaphorical cliff now we were made aware of a change.org petition uh, that was created, nothing to do with us, which, you know, makes it all the more humbling. But basically wanting us to take over the club, to be sold the club for free, because obviously currently we're not in a financial position to buy the club. Obviously the rosé goes well tonight and things may change. But I'm prepared to step in if needed. And I swear to God, I go in there like Ari did when he went to like clean out that fucking, clean out the office and he went mm. in there with a, a paintball gun and just shot at everyone. Like... I'm going in there and iron throning it. Like, you're either with me or you're fucking yeah. you're gone. Look, if we were to be given the club for free, we'd already gold that shit up so goddamn quick. But, I mean, that remains to be seen. What's so troubling about today, Tom, so troubling, is we've, we, we were in this same spot, this same position in 2011-12, right? High off the fucking, high off a win, Des decides to leave for reasons that have never, well... I mean, I'm sure they tried to fuck him then as well. Well, they, I think he wanted complete control and they were trying to take it away from him and so he left. Right, why do you... Why do you why but do you what not, happened after Why don't that? you give control to a guy that the players love and who fucking wins grand finals, gets you to the finals? But also... Like, but that's also, what the point of the fucking coach but is. But also someone that keeps the barbarians from the gate. Correct. The wolves at bay. The fucking fox is out of the hen house, mate. Like, you can... What's happening right now... Fox is in the hen house. Keep him out of the hen house. Yeah, you need to keep it out. You need to keep him out. And Des was trying to keep foxes out because what you're seeing now, chum in the water, chummed up, they're foxes. As soon as you allow the foxes into the hen house, they start fucking eating the chickens. Fucking out they do. Are we in a better position now having sacked Des Hasler? No. All I'm saying is you need to learn from history. Look back. Look back to the Tuvi and the Barrett years. I, that's the thing as well. Scott Penn's like, he walked out on us. It's like, yeah, and then you also selected Tuvi and, and, and Barrett, and they didn't go too well. So don't start fucking swinging your dick around like you're some savant. He's like, and we brought him back. It's like, yeah, dude. Cause you, we brought had- him, you brought him back because we came 15th, and we were on our fucking knees. Exactly. That's why you brought him back, and you got a good price. Power to you. That's nice. You saw, you saw one of the best coaches in the league come and available to check at a discounted race, and we were fifteenth and fucked. Yeah, perfect. Bring the boy back. Already had a rapport with all the players, so it made a lot of sense. You would be a fucking idiot not to have done that. You don't get a pat on the back for making the most obvious decision all the yeah. time. Oh, you mean signing a premiership winning coach? Oh, well done. Oh, fucking hell! It's like me going, mate. <laughs> uh, am I a genius for fucking signing Craig Bellamy? No, you're not. Not a genius. 
If you sign Craig Bellamy tomorrow, you're not a genius. With the Roosters, oh geez, the Roosters went after Cooper Cronk. What a fucking what a oh mis- god. What what's a, what visionaries? Oh god, Trent Robinson is such a fucking intelligent coach for signing Cooper Cronk. Like, what are we talking about? You don't get points for that. Mm. You get points. You get you lose points for not doing it. But all I'm saying is, Tom, we've been here before. And I'm fortunately, for reasons that we talked about on Monday, and obviously Tom and I are emotional, and I think that's fine. This is our place of venting. And in vent we will. Yeah, we will. How can I be filled with confidence when Anthony Seabold was the laughing stock of rugby league a mere 24 months ago? I want him to do well. I want him to do well. And if he does well, I'll sit here and go, I was wrong. Like, why I the, will. Why the, but, fuck, why the fuck wouldn't I want him to do well? Of course, exactly. Of but c- it's like, it's just, it's not, who's, I am yet to see anyone. And genuinely, we've asked it on fucking Twitter. I've asked, I've been reading articles and shit. Like, I can't see anyone who's like, oh, this is a good idea. No one's offering the devil's advocate and going, well, maybe this. Like, no one is like, oh, yeah, that's a fucking good idea. No one. No one's saying that's a good idea. How the fuck is that a good idea? Like, what's... The club hasn't explained it. What did Penn say? He's a fucking intelligent person or something? Like, he he did not... Ex- in his reasons for Anthony Seabold, he was here before and he's intelligent. Mate, he... Look, he... <sighs> He was here before, right? As if that's so fucking... So is Trent Barrett. Let's sign him like, up. What does that mean? Trent's off con- Trent's free. Let's he, get Trent back. He's obviously been... Wool- Trent would be a better option. He's obviously been wool pulled by a PowerPoint of some substance. Well, this thing must be fucking... It must be... It might be like a Nobel Prize winning PowerPoint. Do you reckon it said Professor Anthony Seabold? On the I mean, title card? Well, I think you'd want it to if you're going to try and win the hearts and minds. What concerns me, Thomas... And this is what makes it feel so vindictive, so um, dirty, Mm. is that by all accounts, and all we can do is go off the accounts, it did like they sat down with Dares and put a million fucking conditions on the table for next season, 2023, Mm. and he accepted all of them. They thought they could condition this guy out the back door. Yeah. He said, nah. I want to coach the boys. I think in my heart of hearts, so he can go out and have one of the great seasons and go, fuck you, the lot of you. Well, he's also going, you're going to have to sack me and pay me out, baby. Both. Both can be true. Yeah. Both can be true. He says, no, I'm coaching now. He's been sacked. And I'm like, would you have sacked him 10 weeks ago? Bro... In July, would you have said? Would you have, so, dude, No, no. But I'm just like I'm just saying. Like I know, I know all that. I'm just saying. I don't think you know that, what I'm going to say. Okay. He literally said in July of 2022, this year, just after Pride Round, Des Hasler will coach at Manly for as long as he wants. Where as soon as someone says that, that usually means they're gonna you're marked for death. Yeah, you should actually be like, okay, this is that's the kiss of death in yeah, rugby league. We should have known. I'm just trying to find where the actual exact quote is because. Northern Beaches dribble out. That's not just a up. that's not just a rugby league thing either. That's a world sport thing. The yeah, moment no, the moment you hear that, your cards are marked. So Scott Penn, thirty first of July after the Jersey Saga, Des can coach as long as he wants. The club has given us nothing. They have said nothing. They haven't they haven't given any explanation on how the Jersey Saga happened. They've given. They had the, the fucking owners haven't come out and spoken about that. He wants to come out and talk about how fucking oh, I got, got him back. What about that? You didn't, you, you hung him out to dry when the fucking Jersey saga happened. You hung out DCE to dry when the fucking Jersey saga happened. Where are you fronting up? Has there been a board? Has there been a press conference? Has anyone fucking said anything, Dave? Can you see anything no, on Fox I'm, Sports? I'm just looking on their Twitter account. The last thing was posted on the 5th of October, which is over a week ago on their Twitter account. Yeah, there is no. I'm not blaming the, their fucking social department, but they they they're clearly not doing anything. Like they're like, we don't want to. It's weak. Transparency. It doesn't fucking seem to exist anymore. But like, you just sit there, and to be honest, you sit there jealous, in many respects, looking at clubs like the Roosters, looking Storm. At, looking at clubs like the Storm, who are just run so fucking professionally. Everything's kept in house. 
There's no chumming up the waters. There's no. Uh, you'd kill for a fucking Uncle Nick Politis. Wouldn't or you? a Matt Tripp. Yeah. Who just run, rule with an iron fist. Yeah, yeah. We'll squash you if you, t- if you, and like, you know, that's what you need. We need a billionaire or a couple of, you know, um, podcasters on the rise. Sure. I mean, the people's words, not ours. Correct. They were not, they're not the words I would have chosen. I would have, I would have chosen young, handsome, follically Look, gifted I would, I would podcasters. Ne- I'd never have inserted, I would never insert myself into this situation. What's well, not but having, style. But having been inserted. We can't help if someone's inserted for having us. Having been inserted by the people, mm. I've got to play what's in front of me. Mm. Yeah. Le- leaders are called on to lead rather yeah. than putting themselves forward to lead. Look, we'd go in there and we'd squash, we'd squash out corruption. Allegedly. Well, we'd stomp it out. Yeah, stomp out. Stomp out corruption. corruption, stomp out self-interest, stomp out fucking everyone if we have to. You, can, I, can, I, can I put it this way, Tom? I'd love you to put it some way because none of it makes sense to me. Sorry, I've just got to... You know what, you know what we're seeing? You know what we're seeing unfold in front of us? A situation where not a single fucking person is prepared to put the club first. Who's putting the club first? You and I'd put the club first. We're putting the club first right Again, now. We've been thrust and inserted into this situation. So, you know, it is what it is. But I know who's, who's coming first. It's the club. It's not us. Based on what I'm looking at, what I can see, the optics of the situation, no one is putting the club first. All we do is put the club first. Again, not about us. But all we do is put the club first. It's not about us. But we do. That's all we do. We We're, love the club. That's also... I... We, you and I, Peninsula fans everywhere. We just fucking love Manly, right? We just love the club. We just love the club. And this, the way, like, the people involved in it, out, we love the players as well. We love the players and we love the club. Well, this is an anti-player and it's not an anti-club. But the people running the fucking joint are consistently turned, like making this thing a shit show. Consistently. It happens all the time with Manly. Always. And we still succeed because the the players are fucking good. And because manly spirit trumps all. But the the self interest is absolutely ridiculous. It's abhorrent. Galling. Sickening. Disgraceful. Disgusting, Thomas. Nightmarish. Absolutely appalling. L- 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 ludicrous. Shout out to ludicrous. Well, Luda. Luda? Well, that's how that's what his mates call him. Did Ludicrous uh pimp hit rides? No, that was exhibit. Exhibit. Exhibit fucking exhibit. <laughs> fucking exhibit. Some some of these rap names are funny. Ex- what is, where's X. exhibit now? Where is Exhibit now? Remember he used to put fucking the dumbest shit Dude, in the back he used of to cars, Dude, he used bro. to put TV screens in like the fucking mud flaps and shit. Yeah. Like, this is... <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is... This car is going to get absolutely put up on cinder is, blocks within five minutes of returning. This is to. over the top. He put like microwaves and shit in there. You're like, Dude, bro. microwave is the least thing. There'd be like spa baths and yeah, shit. Aquariums in, like, a, yeah, aquariums and shit yeah, yeah, in the yeah, boot. Yeah. Dude, shout out to Pimp My Ride. That was when... That's when people used to go out and spend... You know, exorb, exorbitant, exorbitant, uh, uh, exorbitant amounts of money on um, custom sound systems. Well, now cars just come with good. Sound so they're yeah, like yeah. your subwoofers and yeah, shit. Yeah, subwoofers that would just and you'd in open the a cunt's boot to put your bag in there on the way to footy training. Yeah, yeah. No room. Sorry, I've got a subwoofer. It's like why though? Like I get it, but like now sound systems just are good enough in cars. But I'm also was never a guy who's like this sound system's not good. I think it's also a shift away from back in the day. It was all like, look at me, you know, the polyphonic ringtone era mm. where it was always like one of the great errors. Now it's like cunts just want it on silent. Yeah, but not in their cars. Well, it depends. No, where you don't where, see as much. Okay. But maybe because we also grew up in country towns. I feel like that was much more the rage. Oh, the Maney. I remember in high school. Oh, the Maney? No, but even in high school. The Maney is a rite of passage. No, of course the Maney, but I'm talking about in high school in Barrel. Shout out to Oxley College. I used to, like all the year 12s and year 11s who had cars, even year 10s, was it 16, would go and sit in the car park after school and open their boots and just 
boots. Oh, fucking, that's good for the soul. You know what I mean? And it that's was like good sound for the system, soul. city, baggy pants, fucking eyebrow rings and shit. And S&P like, belts. Yeah, up? yeah. You'd walk past and be like, Jesus Christ. It never allured me. I was almost a little intimidated by the subwoofer generally. Yeah, it was. It was too. I much. was a kid. It was. It was too loud. There's too much woofer in it for me. Way too much woof. Way too much woof. Uh, it was intimidating. Yeah, it was intimidating. Loud sounds, music I didn't understand. Because, because you know, and I don't want to. I don't want to generalize here. I don't want to stereotype the mani operator, the subwoofer cons- consumer, the subwoofer consumer. But you know, I think you could probably argue they lent in a certain direction. Yeah, you know, no, you that could direction. Go, you go. That direction was like. Fucking punch first, question second, yeah, sort of yeah, guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely. They were they were certainly a like. What are you looking at, bra? Sort of thing. They were wor- they were. What are you looking at, operators? What the fuck are you looking at? Nothing. Nothing. I'm actually just walking home. Nothing. Or to my car. Well, and yeah, I'm waiting my, for mum to yeah, pick. Yeah, waiting me up. for mum and dad to. Be, I don't mean my own personal car. I was fucking. I'm waiting years for mum. Waiting for mum or dad. Yep. Or both. And now I'm looking for one of those safety houses. You yeah, know yeah. What I mean? Is there like, a safe spot? Is there I'm a safe spot? Am I, I'm going to have to go walk into Woolies and stand next to the fucking is that the a, deli section. Yeah, because don't, don't, don't hit me over there with a the trolley pole, please, sir. I'm about to get fucked up. About to get, don't, are you going to hit me over there with that skateboard? I'd prefer if you didn't. Yeah. Let's just go okay. back to our respective uh, areas. You go back to your subwoofer. I you like go back it. to your woof. Look. I'm not here to steal it. I'm not here to nick it. I'm not here to trash it. I'm not here to fucking bag it. Or pub, no, pub, no, no judgment pass. You let me walk back into the sanity and I'll just go and start perusing CDs. You go back to your subwoofer and I'm going to call my mum reverse charge on a pay phone. Please let me go back to EB Games to pretend to look, look, look to buy something just to get out yeah, of Yeah, I'm just going to just gonna go peruse shoes at Clark's, Clark's shoes. Shout out um, to Clark's. Shout out to Clark's. So anyway, Exhibit, where, what's he up to? Um, not too much in recent years. He had a bit of trouble with tax evasion in the early 2010s. I think he's about to release his final album next year. He said that in a few interviews. Okay. He was doing a bit of acting as well as his rap career, voiced some video games. Not too much about him in the news recently. How so, old is he? Uh, he is 48. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to pimp your ride. He had a cool voice. He did. I will say that. He's deep and grovelly. So. Manly. Manly. I don't know if there's too much else. No, we this, love the club. This, this is where we're at. This is where we're at. We love the club. We love the club because unlike fucking everyone else, Tom and I put the club first. Yeah, club first. Us second. After the rant, after... Big Day Rose Day starts to work its magic. Yep. We'll be club first again. And if that means getting on our knees for Anthony Seabold, then so fucking be it. Trust me, I'm already starting to warm him up. We'll warm him up. We'll, listen, we will if continue. It's what, if it's if, what the club needs. If it's what the club needs, it's what I'll do. I'll warm him up. He hasn't been officially appointed yet, so we are still well within our rights to criticise the appointment. Once he is appointed, as it looks like he will be, then our tune will change. But I'm not going to pretend like I'm not upset. Good chance he's signing the papers right now. I'm not going to pretend like I'm not upset by it. Well, I'm not. I'm not upset. I'm concerned. I'm disappointed. I'm concerned. By I'm it. concerned. I'm upset. That I'm my 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 my. You're not upset. My most powerful emotion is is concern. 100%. Mine is bewilderment. Fucking bastards. Crafty fuckers. It's bewilderment, dude. I'm bewildered. I did, like the decisions. Got him, yes. No, I didn't get didn't? him. Didn't? Fuck. <laughs> no. Nah. Jesus. Fuck, they're quick. Nah. Barflies. Sorry, punish dribblers for those of you that can't see. They're fucking quick. I am bewildered. I am shocked. But I am concerned. More than anything. We're alert and alarmed. I'd say this as well. Just if I can... Yes. Got him. Vale. Look, listen here, cunt. Listen here, Barfly. Like, fool me once, fool me twice, fool me thrice, whatever. You're not going to fool me forever, bro. No, I no. will get you. If you keep coming back. If you if you keep circling back in, taking the piss, mm. going, I'm too quick for you, bro, look the fuck out because I will adjust. Yeah, you'll make the correct adjustments. I'll make, adju- I'll make adjustments. I might not get you first time, second time, third out the gate. I will get you. So if you want to fucking play that game, why am I wiping you off yet off my hands? 
That's just a warning. No, that's a warning to Barflies generally and anyone who just wants to step to him. I wanted to say something, Tom, on behalf of a lot of concerned Manly Seagulls fans. Mm. Don't buy the Trebojevic brother bullshit. Don't buy it. I'm sure they're not stoked, but, but the, I've got faith that those gentlemen don't want to leave the club. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Oh, they want to go tomorrow. No, they don't. Those, if you don't think, listen here, in, in trying times, in dark times, mm. who do you turn to? You turn to your, to, your, to your leaders. If you don't think that John Trebojevic... Of Tomato Farmer Union. The, pa- of the, tomato the patriarch farmer. of the family yeah. hasn't got all the boys around the fucking dining room table right this moment. Except for Jake, who's overseas playing for Australia. Speaking to every single one of them. Jake's going, on Zoom. Jake's on Zoom, of course he is. Looking them in the eyes going, this is now more than ever the club needs you boys. Go out there and galvanise the playing squad. The, 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 the rumours and shit in the paper about like, People talking about Tommy Turbo now and Dirty. his value to the club and like what the fuck like if there's any if if you uh if they find out who's starting to spread those things for in within the club if it's I assume it's not players because you play with Tom and you realize his value but let's say if they if you find out who is spreading that shit or saying that shit within the club they should be sacked immediately. They should be sacked. You go, bro, we don't need your bullshit. Like, that's so clearly a bad take and bad for the club. And don't like, get out, bro. You know what I'd be doing, Tom? Get out. I'd be going into that bitch and I'd be spreading Barnum yarns and going, if they leak, yep. we got to find the leak, dude. Much like this leak in our roof. Where's the rat? Where's the rat? Who's the rat? I'd be out there spinning one yarn to one bloke, one yarn to another. Jotting it in my little diary, making sure that I know who got what yarn and waiting. Like The Departed, when Leo's sitting there with that fucking guy and he's like, you realise he's been undercover the whole time. I never told you the address. And then he dies. Correct. Correct. I'll be going depart on that shit. I think you got to go Departed, find the rat, kill the rat. Or rats. 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 Anyway... From this point on, within reason, we're going to be positive. We're going to be up vibe. And I hope I don't have to talk about Manly again until next year. Something tells me that we'll be talking about Manly again. Something, I get that Um, sense. Only once fucking Seabold's official who... I mean... Can I also say... And again, you don't know what you're reading anymore. It could all be horseshit. But who, like, if you, it seems to me, right, that when I read Brisbane hierarchy or Brisbane officials give glowing, glowing testimonials, I'm like, who's fucking ask? Who's they sacked the cunt after like two how, years? How can they like one and a half years? If I sack someone for running Hello Sport into the ground and someone called me two years later going, what do you think? I wouldn't be like, he was amazing. Like, what the... F-? Like, if Tobler turned heel and started selling our dirty little secrets to the highest bidder, brought us all down, not we have any, just an example, using sort of creative fucking... Creative license here. Exactly. I mean, eat him up for dirty little secrets, though. Hit him up. He doesn't like, have any. Imagine that. And we fuck him off. We found out that he's selling our dirty little secrets to the highest bidder. And we're on our knees, right, you and I. We come back, obviously, because we can't be killed. No, we can't be killed. But let's say we're on our knees. If I get a call two years later from his prospective employee being like, what do you think of him? What, I'm not going to say... He's a piece of shit? Or unless the person who's coming is someone I want to sabotage, then I go, great. Direct uh, or direct, a, competitor. direct competitor. Then yeah. I go, he was amazing. And if Manly's using a glowing reference from Brisbane, who, what dumb motherfucker isn't going, hmm, might be a little sceptical of uh, why yeah. they might be giving me a glowing endorsement for a guy that we sucked a year and a half into a six-year contract. Uh, are we getting Trojan horsed again? Yes, dude, we're getting Trojan horsed, but this time we're allowing that Trojan horse into our assholes, so and then you, they're going to break out and just basically fuck us to, to death. To use a reference from a club who sacked him is fucking ridiculous. 
And if you don't think that that reeks of a Trojan horse, then you've got something wrong with you. First Girdler, now the Broncos. If we, we're getting Trojan horsed again. How do you? We've got it? a Trojan horse problem. The difference between us and Troy and Troy is that they only bought it once. Well, they they didn't come back from one. But not a, well, they didn't well, exactly. We're lucky to have come back. But the thing is, that lesson's taught to everyone now. Yeah, you Trojan horse me once, shame on you. Trojan horse me twice, shame on me. Correct. That's the old adage. Barflies are back. They're less lippy. Bro, got him. Got off. Oh, all right. Got him. Got the Sorry husband. Sorry to do that to you, bro. Oh, yeah. Nice try, dickhead. We might start a tally. It's one all. It's one all. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need to because there's that many in this fucking joint. Bar flies, not a bar. Not a bar, one all. But I, I it, that seems suspicious to me. Mm. It, I can't help but being, I, I can't help but feel a little suspicious. highly alarmed. Mm. A little suspicious. I'm a little suspicious. Yeah, we've got suspicious minds, you and I. We can go on <laughs> together. Yeah, the, the, we're, we're suspicious, suspicious minds. We're suspicious minds. Shout out to Elvis. We get R.I.P. Elvis in our dreams. We're, we're suspicious, suspicious minds. minds. And I do <laughs> Good song. Great song, bad situation. We're suspicious, man. We're suspicious, man. Um, listen, my range may need a little work. <laughs> man, I think it was pretty good. It's hard to go high. It is hard to go high. We can probably hit low. It's easy to go low. It's easy to go low, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I take the high. I think I'm maybe a bit more. Maybe you're better low. I'm better my, high. Maybe my better down here. Come over here, baby. Take off your clothes. <laughs> that's not a song from Elvis, I don't think. Uh, I think that's. I was just trying to be deep in song. No, no, yeah, that you need to at least sing, unless you're just trying to fucking ask people to get nude, which is <laughs> fine. But we were trying to. We were trying ain't to. nothing but a high. Come and all the time. Well, that's it. You was high, Well, That was a harmonising bit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay. So Manly's fuck, guys. Um, I don't know what else we can really add to that at the moment. We're in some we're in some 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 off season curry. Hot curry. Yeah. This isn't curry. mild, this isn't medium. No, no, this is this is uh this is hot cauldron sort of like boiling curry. Boiling curry. Mm. I thought I thought hot in like taste. And I'm saying hot as in temp as well. Can you imagine having a hot Flavoured boiling curry. Hell. 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 When we talk cricket on the show, we do it thanks to our good friends at KO. Catch all games of the Cricket World Cup live and ad free during play starting this weekend. Well, not this weekend, weekend after. We're doing a live show, live stream for Australia v New Zealand. But we lost to England back to back games. In the T20. Do I take much out of that? I don't know. Dave Warner, four. Aaron Finch, 13. Mitch Marsh of Swamp Junior, Junior fame, 45. Glenn Maxwell, eight. Stoin, 22. Tim David of unknown fucking cricket sensation, 40. And then Matthew Wade, 10. And Pat Cummins, 18. Both not out. I England, won, England beat us by eight runs. Like, I take nothing out of it, Tom. They if got one good... Did they only just get one good score? Fuck the Poms. David Milan. If you go Darwood, B- Darwood, worst name all time. Can I ask? And I don't want to be like culturally inappropriate. Is Darwood 
like a, you know, is that a name from another culture or is he just up his own ass? Can I ask you this, Tom? Can I ask you this? Is it is it David, but they've put double Vs there? And people of South Africa moved to South Africa at the age of seven, so that wouldn't make a difference, Dave. Well, maybe his parents were from them. Right, but yeah, that's middle not name, what it middle, says. Name, middle name Johannes, very South African name, that. Is Darwin South... Yeah, you're the man... Is Darwin South African? You're called David. <laughs> yeah, so not Darwin. D or Darwin? But is Darwin not just two Vs? Well, no, it's W. It is, but not like joined. David? Uh, no. Well, it, it comes from the name David. It's the same... No shit. <laughs> you're not shocking anyone there with that news. No. You're saying Polish? Nah, look, it's pretentious. Whatever. It's pretentious. I don't care. No, 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 I don't. It's pretentious. No disrespect. Culturally, it's pretentious. Uh, can we go back to... The score there, Eddie. Let me say this, Tom. Do we care about this? Well, you're not letting me speak. I was just asking the question. The reason I don't care is if you think that the World Cup's getting won in the fucking warm-up games, Mm. you're an idiot. This is what England does every fucking year, every World Cup. They'll boast and they'll brag about winning the the shit games that don't matter. Yeah. And then Australia comes out, and maybe we take a game or two to warm up in the actual World Cup, but if we make the semis, we win the fucking thing, and it's as simple as that. England come out early, and they swing their pale dicks with their red pubes around and think that anyone's intimidated. They're they're under the illusion that warm-up games count. Mm. I'm here to tell you, England, they don't count for fucking anything. They don't give a... They don't count for shit. If you're not there when the whips are cracking, they don't bother. Yep. But Australia, as evidenced by a performance last year in the United Emirates, love it when the whips are cracking. Well, we're a whips cracking nation. Always have been. That's why we. So, that's why we revere the stockman. Yep. A cracker of whips. Cracker Tom. of whips. As a nation, as a man, as a people. Him up there in the Kubrick and bloody dries a boned out, yeah. cracking whips. Not to be mistaken for Jarch, friend of the show, who tries to act like a stockman but dislocates his shoulder when he cracks a whip. Yeah, so that's the difference. Real stockmen crack and crack always. Faux stockmen. Jarch. Jarch. Show off in front of their... TikTok audience. Well, their partners, siblings, partners. Mm. And their shoulders come out. They dislocate their shoulders. Um, now that doesn't have a lot to do with this specific thing in terms of like England v Australia, but it's no, 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 no. It's got what does it's it's just a fact. It's Tom. just a fact. I'm not going to run away from a fact. No, you can't. Well, facts run towards you. So even if you try run, you can't outrun facts. No, you can't. And I can't run outrun the fact that Jarge of faux stockman fame dislocated his shoulder, showing off. Yeah, trying to crack a whip. And just so you know, the whip did not crack when the shoulder did. Dislocate. Faux stockmen don't crack whips. No. They disco shot. They faux crack them, yep. which means they don't crack them. See the point? Now, no, that's great point. Australia, not worried, not concerned, no issues here. Josh Hazelwood, four overs, 39 runs. Like, he, he's going at 9.75 and over. Are you telling me that the country boy, the best 2020, T20 rather, bowler in the world, is going at 9.75 and over if the whips are cracking? No. I'll tell you what's interesting. Pretty sure that Smudge is going to be left out. Not a big hitter. We need a bit more. We need it. Well, Oomph seemingly owns the day. Smudge at one point was staring down the barrel of 50 fucking test tons. Now. Well, we know what happened. Now, not We so can't, much. like, we can't, I can't, we can't, the nation can't get away from the fact that he missed a year. He came back, sure, and dominated the, it, no, but he dominated that Ashes series in England. That felt, like hindsight's so powerful, it now feels like so that, powerful. It feels like that was his where he left a lot of his energy mm. and a lot of his soul. Is not peace to resistance. What is it? His magnum opus. Magnum opus. That's what it feels like. And now it's like now it's now it's sort of like the afterlife a little bit. Yeah, so he's a, he's a technically dead in cricket terms, but he's still living. He's still living, he's still doing it, but like that was the zenith the comeback as it were like you know when tiger tiger woods is still playing golf but he's basically got one knee and one leg but he but he's come back was again the with the power of hindsight tom the most powerful tool of all was the masters now he's still living he's still with us and this isn't a shot at smudge i'm just saying 
when you're getting dropped from the T20 side, when you haven't scored many tons in the last two years, maybe that was it. I hope I'm wrong. Hope I'm wrong. Catch all games of the T20, World Cup on KO, also test cricket all this summer. <laughs> Big Day Rosé on sale now. And by now, I mean 6 p.m. Thursday night, but technically now. Well, you know. Listen, there's a beautiful poem on the back, which I'm not going to read. You can fucking read it yourselves when you buy it. I'd be I'd be scanning that QR code. <laughs> That's one thing I will say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. finish it off. I'll give myself a little bit extra there. Bring it home, puppy. Can I call you puppy? You can call me puppy. My bucks this weekend, punters and dribblers. Yeah, we got Eddie's bucks. Um, we're off to Palm Beach on Friday. Yeah. Is it Friday? We're going up on Friday, mate. And then going up to just some ripping and tearing. Going up to warm up. We're going to be warm up Friday. I'm warming up on Friday. Yep. I mean, that's the, that's the famous last words. You're not warming up. You go hard as fuck Friday and then you feel like ratchet for maybe an hour or so on Saturday. But knowing that there is a day of ripping and tearing to be had, you're back after the first sip of Big Day Rosé. Listen. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Thursday – you pay the toll. There will be a toll paid, Tom. We've talked at length about that privately. I don't know how much we don't have any B pays either. This thing's paid. This thing's like coins I'm, only. We go, like I, I, are you call it redlining? Like I understand that Friday will be a red line. I get that. I'm not an idiot. Well, okay. I look, so I look, I look, I look back. I look back at my my history, Tom, and I've always been lured in. I'll see you at sunrise. And s I've been suckered in in full by the warmer. We're going to go full Koshy and Mel. You're going to be hosting Sunrise, right? I've always, I've always been lured in by the, by the, by the warm up, by the pre's, yeah. as it were. Everyone is. I'm a pre's guy. However, I would take a warm up over no warm up every day of the fucking week. Absolutely. All you, for the run. All you need to know, punters and dribblers, all you need to know is this: if I get a coupler, if I get three or four. I am good to go. Mm. I am right as rain. The the bender, the in the classic sense of the word, the two dayer. Mm. I don't have it in me anymore. I never in in, I never did. in truth, Tom. I never really did. No, I never had a two. I've, I've had hung them, on, but I haven't had it in me. I've hung on for dear fucking life. Yeah. Know that. Yeah. I've hung on like my life depended on it, and in in some instances, I've I've had a lot of fun. Mm. I've had a great amount of fun, but there is still part of me that's hanging on for dear life, like white knuckle stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like when you, if you're on a roller coaster, you realize you haven't been strapped in. You're like, okay, okay, we're onto it now. Yeah, this is a live. Yeah. This is a life or death situation. Yeah, you know, you just you, and what do you have to do then, Tom? Bite, bite down on the mouth guard. White knuckle it. You got to bite down on the mouth guard and go. Okay, this is my time. Yeah, this is my moment. I'm, I've been called on now. Yeah, when greatness calls, mm. are you there to answer the phone? Now. I've been there to answer the phone from greatness from time to time, mm. but I don't like picking up the have you, phone. No, have you taken a call from greatness before? I have. I have. And We've done it. I've, I've done it, right? Know that. But the the older you get, the harder it is to take the call. You see greatness calling, you go, bro, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Bro, I used to be able to fucking take the call, go for two days, then get up and sell suits at fucking David Jones for 12 hours. Well... Mine wasn't selling suits as much as it was either jackhammering or things of that nature, yeah. sweeping a building, or I would roll into work in the old radio station a couple of hours before I was meant to do a show and sleep under my desk. You did do that from time to time. I'm talking back way back in the day when you used to do this shit f like... Well, then Every I was just in night. a bottle shop and yeah. it was like... I, I mean, used to cry on the bus, get in there and sit on the John for half the day, but I got the job done. What I would do, a friend of mine used to make uh, vegan cigarette butter. If that makes sense. Have it with your toast. Vegemite toast. Bullshit. Vegan cigarette butter. And I'd go up to the bottle shop, shout out to the Royal in Paddington. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Uh, fame. And, uh, fame. And I would just be in there selling wines and shit to people and people would always come and go what red wine pairs with steak and i'd just go i don't know you, you wouldn't cut you wouldn't make something up sometimes i'd, I'd lie and other times i go don't know not gonna lie to you and i think they probably appreciated that 
I and some look honestly, just, just fucking make your own mind up, dude. But sometimes, sometimes the truth's the best way. Yeah, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. I remember once I was I was in the suit. You've been set free by the truth. I have, and I'll tell you when. I was in uh, I was in David Jones' suit section, Bondi Junction, circa two thousand and nine. Great year. And I used to ply my trade, Tom, with relative success in the shirts and ties section. I also had a couple of dear friends who were spruiking um, bow ties and cufflinks, and I could pair them into there for later okay. on just to get the job done as yep. well, finish it off. Yep. But I wasn't a big suit guy. Why? Didn't fucking know anything about suits. But you could, you could, you could spin a shirt. I could spin a shirt. And I remember one night, 5.30, no one's up there except me. A guy comes up, wants a suit. Now, at the start, I'm trying to fumble my way through it. And I can sense this man getting frustrated by the service he's getting provided by a guy who doesn't know anything except shirts and ties. What? Okay, I'll come back to ties, but yep. It wasn't until, and I'm having a mild panic attack, right? It wasn't until I go, listen. Can I be honest for a moment? Brass tacks. Let's get down to brass tacks, you and I, man to man, mano a mano. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've picked up on that or not. I'm sure you have. But I got no clue. And Do you mind if I step over, step to step the side for a moment, make a call? <laughs> sure. Manager, listen, bit of an issue. Bloke down here, he's asked for you personally. Of course he hasn't. He's asked for the manager. Why is that? He just wants a, he wants a more professional touch. Yeah, yeah. He wants. Well, he wants an experienced hand. A she com hand. she comes down. Is fuming the right word? It's not far off fuming. Foaming, written on her face. Comes down, gets the job done. But it wasn't until I was honest with myself and with the customer mm. that I was set free. Well, you were set free. Now, were you were you sacked? Well, I was given less shifts. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's I was given I was given considerably less shifts, less yep. shifts, yep. until I walked up there and demanded more and demanded more shifts. Yep. Give me more shifts, but only in shirts. What's, <laughs> what's the answer to tie work? How do you? Because you're a shirt and tie guy by trade. Yep. How are you selling ties? Is it just purely a colour thing, a thickness? Well, it's, I mean, there's, there's... You don't even know how to tie wins or not. No, I don't. But I don't... I'm a schoolboy guy. Always have been, always will be. Yes. I'm a schoolboy guy and that's fine. No, I would say probably not in the suit game, though. Listen, with the right tie, you can pass a schoolboy and you know it. No, you definitely you can. But, you, but nothing beats If you them. get shit, thin, polyester crap, then you're in trouble with a schoolboy. I'll admit that. But if you get a big, thick, silky... Or a beautiful cotton, you'll be fine. Was the invention of the tie pre-button? Well, it was to point? hide. It was to hide the button, Tom. But oh, hide it's to all hide the, the button. That's purely it to hide the button. To hide the button, and it should sit a mere mill above the belt. Okay, cover all the button. All buttons. All buttons must be covered now. So I've got a bit of info on the invention of the tie. Seventeenth century during the Thirty Years' War uh, was kind of published like promoted by the French who saw Croatian soldiers wearing it and they wore kind of knotted handkerchiefs around their necks to keep the top of their jackets together. Just shout out the Croatians. Colors. Sure. But the length of the modern tie to hide the button. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, but it's all, it's rooted in my family's lineage. Sure. And shout out to them. I'm half Australian, half Kiwi, half Croatian. Make it that what you will. Um, but, you know, the, the tie... How are you selling me a tie? The tie comes down to, what's your price range, sir? Price point. Price point? Well, price range. Because we can dance. Yeah. What's it for? If you go into the races, maybe I lean you into something a bit more fruity, maybe something that's got maybe a pattern on it, maybe something that pops off the shirt, mm. Tom, maybe a bit of colour, maybe a bit of panache. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm seeing a bit of floral. If you go into work, different story. Gotta keep Are you wearing a pinstripe? Because I'd highly, highly recommend that you stare that you steer away from a pinstriped tie and a pinstripe shirt. You don't want to look like a fucking stripey nightmare. Exactly. So what are you wearing it with? What colour is the suit? What's the occasion? 
How bold are you? What's the makeup of the man? Yeah, well, that's also I was gonna I was gonna ask about that. It's also gonna be about a, like a, a horses for courses. Are you iron the horses and picking courses. You got to iron that horse. You got to pick that course. One hundred and fifty percent. Like if a man comes in and he goes, listen, sir, I'm looking for a bed sheet. You can tell I'm a bigger guy. I go, wait right here while I go and get the stool and I'll pull you down a Van Heusen 50 neck. It's cheap, I know. Off off you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You got it's 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 really horses for courses. This guy, so this guy just needs a bed the big, sheet. Basically. The big the big the big the big fella, the big fella who's, who's not looking for fucking Tom Ford. The big fella who's sweating from using the escalator. And I'm just, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> well, that's just a reality. Some people are. I'm not taking him to a Marnie. Because they fucking everything they do is skinny as fuck. Yeah. That's not my fault. No, they don't do a classic fit. He's it's all out skinny. Of it. It's all skinny fit. He knows that. I know that. I also would argue he probably isn't classic. Classic is a nice way of saying Thickies. large fit. Damn, that's much nicer than like... Yeah, you're a classic fit, sir. Because classic is a much nicer way than like, you know, what would be a uh, heavy or like, you know, big and tall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, I'll give you the wide fit, sir. Yes. Oh, you're a... You're a yeah, yeah, you're big and tall. And but I think, I think, you know... <laughs> There are well, there were certain times when I would have to sort of like you know dust off some shirts from the very top. Yeah. Maybe you get a look like fuck. Is this it for me? And I go, well, you know. Yeah, it is uh, at the moment. It, it it, at the moment, it at is. the moment, at this size. At the moment, it is. Now, where are we going with this? I don't know, dude. I couldn't tell you. All I'm well, that was what it was. Backing up, I used to be able to go and sell fifty necks in the Van Heusen. After a fucking two day, I used to be right. able to. That's I used to be able to do that. Your bucks. <laughs> I used to be able to do that, Tom. No longer. No. Now my job's got easier, but the pills got harder to swallow. Yep. But that doesn't mean I won't be fucking warming all the way up. All I'll be doing is having a break in between. Yeah. So the the job has got easier. The the our job. Yeah. No, I understand. That's what my you mean. job. Your job. Our job, mm -hmm. the people's job, much easier, markedly easier. Yep. But it doesn't mean I'm not going to be sulking all week next week. I'll be sucking. Yeah. No, that I'll sooking. be. I'll be sucking. I think maybe we line up on Monday like a sauna. I wouldn't mind sweating it out. Well, we do on Monday, so that's the box. We do on Monday have to rally in our own way, yep. and and rally for for one of the great Australians living, Ned Brockman. Ned Brockman. Now this motherfucker ran through Wagga yesterday, punters and dribblers. So he's he's but a bee's dick away, which in, is in, in context in in, in in continent terms. Yes. In continental terms. In continental terms, he's a bee's dick away. He's looking like running into the greatest city on the planet. 6 p.m. ish. I'm just using a number here. Mm. 6 p.m. ish Monday evening. Now, if things don't go his way, maybe it'll be Tuesday. But we're going off the, presu the presumption it's Monday. That's going to be a tough day for you and I. But we're going to have to live it. Monday will be a tough day, but I won't. I hazard a guess and say it won't be as tough as Tuesday. And I think it's better that he comes in Monday. We maybe, you know, microdose on gummies all day and just sort of get through it. Grit our teeth. Grit our teeth and go, this is for you, Ned. Yeah, this is for you. You run across the country so we could maybe get a little gummied and come watch you finish. We're well, doing our part. <laughs> Put it, Yeah, we are doing our part. You could make a strong argument in the court of law, Tom, that our Monday, should we do that? Should we should we rise for Ned harder than his 100 Ks? We are going to rise for Ned. Not should we rise for Ned, when we rise for Ned. And we're calling on all of you to rise for Ned. Rise for Ned. Now, part of rising for Ned involves donating. I'm sorry, but it does. Yep. And if you haven't yet fucking given money to the homeless, then you need to have a long, hard look at yourself. Dude, he's in 800 K. He's trying to raise a million for the homeless. I'm just getting it up. Nedsrecordrun.com. It's oh, nedsrecordrun.com or .com.au. Yeah, we'll get it One up. Dave, two. can you get it up? Because yeah. my phone's just fucking going off uh, with 
people basically hitting us with change.org shit, so... Yeah, it's just .com. Ned's record run.com, and that's Ned Double D. Yep. Ned's record run.com. The big fella's all, he's, raised, he's raised 800, Tom, is that right? 800 grand, I think. It's a lot of dough, right? Where is mate. he? 820 cuz. He's going to fucking hit a million bucks. Easy. That is insane. He'll do a, he'll do a million easy, mate. He'll shit yeah, a million. Yeah, that is insane. But that doesn't mean, punters and jubblers, that that's reason for you to fucking put the wallet back into the pants. We, we, we get to get to a million and a half. You know what? A million's the min. That's yeah. the minimum. Now, if you haven't donated, please do Please donate as much as you possibly can. If that's five bucks, so be it. That's fine. Every dollar counts. It's for great causes for the homeless. This motherfucker has run from Perth. From Perth to Bondi. And he's a mere bees dick away in continental terms. In continent, continentally speaking. Continentally speaking, a bees dick away. Put it this way. If I can get off my fucking um, hot, ripped, hot toned, ass. tweet, hot gorgeous, ass. hot, godly ass. And, and go and support Ned, mm. even though I've just been on a box, you can give a fiver. You can give a fiver and get off your fat, sloppy, undefined, pudgy, dimply, hail-damaged, fat ass. Yeah. You can do the same. You can do the same. You can do the same. I was describing my ass. So shout out to Ned. I will be... Can I be honest with you, Tom? Mm-hmm. And this might sound like sadistic of me, and I don't want it to. But I'm going to miss... The daily check-ins. I'm going to miss the fucking narrative. Fuck, that's not sadistic. It, but mate, it is but on sadistic him. for him. Yeah, for him. Mate, I'm going to miss him. I love nothing more than going, what'd he do today? How far's he run? Yeah. What's the big fella fucking ripped out today? Because every day is different. Like, he'll be so high on his own supply in a great way. Well, in the most appropriate way. And you know, he's run back to back 100K days, so high on his own supply. You're like, fuck yeah, Ned, you're ripping and tearing, bro. Next day, I'll do 20s in tears. It's a, it's a roller coaster of emotions mm. that I'm loving and have loved. Yes. We'll have to find a way to fill that. Maybe we send Tobler or Dave out to try and run to Perth. <laughs> Tobler to Perth. Jeez, that Donkey. Donk. Donk does Perth. Donk. Don Do- Tobler's nickname is Donkey now, just by the way, for anyone who's wondering. Or Donk. Donk. Donk or Donkey. Donk because he reckons he's got a bit of Phil Olivetti about him. Well, if you know what I mean. Yeah, he also used it to describe his piece. <laughs> That's what Phil did. Oh, I didn't. See, I haven't seen it for years. I've forgotten the Tom, whole fucking come on. thing. Come Sorry, on. guys. Come on. We can be heroes. Not seen it for a million years. I watch, I'll throw We Can Be Heroes on like every couple of years. Yeah? Yeah. It's fucking hilarious. I think it's his best work personally. Uh, it's pretty close. Do you remember when you used to watch... Was, Gran was one of the funniest fucking characters in... That was in Angry Bad Boys. Boys or Angry, Angry Boys, Boys. Or whatever. Angry Boys wasn't... It wasn't that good. It's like... I won't be upset if you have Summer Heights High above We Can, we can we, Be Heroes. We Can Be Heroes. But there's but nothing... They're, they're interchangeable in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. And then after that... it. It falls off a cliff. After nothing. that, there were characters that were really good and there were characters that were shit. What I found crazy was that when they came out there with Angry Boys and he was doing like Jonah. And, well, Jonah was in Summer Heights. Jonah, Jonah was Summer Heights. Jonah was, all, was Jonah in Angry Boys as well? Yeah, I believe so. Just to like hypocrisy of people who fucked with it when it was out there and then now like he's a racist piece of shit. I get it's inappropriate to do in today's climate. But you're like, bro, it was fucking funny when it came out before you knew it was inappropriate. Like you know, what do you do? I can't. I can't speak for Islanders. And like, if you're if they're offended, then I is, can get it, they're it offended. Is, but like, were the actors in it at the time offended? That's I don't know. Oh, Jonah wasn't in Angry Boys. That's my bad. I get they're offended in today's context. I can understand it now, but in the moment, and I'm more talking not even about Islander people. I can understand if they were offended the whole fucking time. I find it more the, um, the virtue signaling from people. Like white people who yeah, fucking yeah, loved sure. it during the time. Now they're like, he's sure. a piece of shit. Sure. Anyway. Not about not, that. Not about that. All I'm saying is We Can Be Heroes was fucking funny. Yes. And Summer Heights High was fucking funny. It was fu- like to the point. I remember when We Can Be Heroes came out, people legitimately, you know, people that I know thought it was real. Thought it was a documentary. <laughs> I'm like. Who are those people? 
what the fuck is wrong with you? He was playing multiple Are you characters. telling me you thought Ricky Wong was legitimately Chinese? <laughs> or the kid, the, the deaf twins? <laughs> or one twin was deaf? You know those twins who were like... That, I reckon that was probably the most believable. If you're watching it, and you're saying that this is the same person in every single different fucking... You remember, you remember Ricky Wong's song about um, Kathy Freeman? You can win gold. <laughs> Just believe in yourself and you can run fast. Kathy, you I know. Don't. I, don't <laughs> I don't remember it. Who was is, who is the chick with the club foot who got a fucking gum nut stuck up her Oh, nose? that was um, Pat uh, Mullins. Pat Mullins. She Dude. died, yeah, she bro. Died. She died. She trying to roll to Uluru? <laughs> no, she got cancer. No, but wasn't she trying to roll to Uluru? So she was trying to roll. They were so pumped. Then she gets the cancer comes back. She tries anyway, and they have to stop, and then she dies. What a what an insanely dark twist <laughs> on that storyline. I dude. know. What the fuck? That was so fucked. That, but it like, but it was so perfect. It was like it's still <laughs> fucking hilarious. Pat <laughs> Mullins is like so, like absolutely nailed that character, mm. and the guy he got to cast the husband, that Irish remember. guy. I can't remember him. That like sort of like. Portly Again, I haven't seen bearded cunt. Years. Terry. I haven't seen it for years. Terry. 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 Oh, Terry. That's good Phil shit. Phil Olivetti's a fucking... But Phil Olivetti of mm, donk, donk fame. fame. So he had... He was hogged up. Was that the... Well, he said he was. And he'd kill... He, like, because he retired from being a cop because he saved those kids he out He broke his the, arm in the jumping castle and shit. But he like. would, like, call the station and go, yeah, like, Tommy, it's donk. And then he'd be like, donkey. Phil. <laughs> Yeah, Phil, Phil Olivetti, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That shit, that shit still, that shit still sells. That nah, holds up. That holds up. Um, what was his name? Chris Lilly. Chris Lilly. I see him knocking around every once in a while. Yeah, I used to see him around at Beach Road heaps when I worked there. That's all you do, Dave. Every time Dave speaks to anyone, we had a friend of the show, Ryan Grant of Sydney FC Socceroos fame, in the studio yesterday. Episodes to be released later. Uh, we'll great say th- we'll say this. We'll say this. Fucking great guy. Great guy and a dribbler. So it was nice to like, you know, we we you know when you have these interviews and shit, which is it's always great to talk to. But then when you're like, you know, your Magnusons, your Rowan Brownings, excuse me, your Ryan Grants, who actually are like podcast listeners, you're like, oh, this guy's a. It's not why they're cool dudes, but it makes them cooler. Hundred percent. And like, I may be like bias, but. Country boy. What's it, Caloundra? Caloundra. Caloundra. I mean, look. And again, into Bathurst. Caloundra into Bathurst. Caloundra into Bathurst. Like, all right. We're dude. basically brothers. <laughs> Just talk dirty to me, brah. Yeah. Central West into fucking Central West. Yeah. 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 He may as well be spitting on your door. Spit on that door. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ryan Grant, one of the greats. No, Ryan Grant, great. Um, he'll be out later um, on the SEN All Talk series. He will be. We will on on all talk. We, we'll be taking a a, uh, a slight break, a hiatus. That was basically season one. Yeah, season one all talk. Finished with Eddie Hearn, biggest boxing uh, player in the world. Sorry. sorry. Uh, season two will be coming out. We just need a bit of time to bank up some episodes. Why? Because I'm going on my honeymoon. You get the drift. Eddie's getting married. You know what happens on honeymoons? Know what happens on honeymoons? Hello, you listening? <laughs> no. Oh, honeymoon's about, right? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Huh? Huh? I didn't, oof, that's fucking weird. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, give me um, one. Hmm? Give me one. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, anyway, season two, we'll be back with you momentarily. Ryan Grant, one of the greats. One of the greats. Um, but there was a reason I mentioned Ryan Grant. Because... So, uh, he spotted me around somewhere. And this motherfucker's just... Con- Every time there's someone in, he's like, oh, yeah, beach road. I see your beach road. Oh, yeah, it's always like... Did you hear those two dickheads just rambling on? No offence, right? But, like, going on to each other. Were you at, like, Sleepy Sundays and Happy Mondays yeah, and yeah. fucking Fast Tuesdays Sundays, and Sundays, Tucked shit. in Tuesdays and Danky <laughs> Dundays and Doobie Dundays. Yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah. okay, dude. It's sloppy like, fucking sloppy seconds. Sloppy Saturdays, sloppy and seconds. Night owl Mondays yeah, and all that yeah, shit. Yeah. I'm just around the scene, just moving and shaking my way around. Yeah, yeah, Are you yeah, like putting a, a good word out there? Would you say you're a mover and shaker in I that say scene? I, I can be. I can definitely. Well, you either be. are, or, or you, you are, are not. Look, my moving and shaking days are, you know, 
the peak is probably behind like, him. Like, you're right, you're like 24. Like would, you, like, would you say that Eddie Hearn is one day a mover and shaker and the next day he isn't? No, he's a full-timer. That's like, you I either, sh- like, you either, either move, move and, shake, and you shake or you, you don't. don't. Well, so what is it? Sometimes I am, sometimes I don't, just like yeah, you said. No, so no. you're not. So you're not. Um, but so why do you always run into him? Do you bro down and shit? Do you know each other? Who, Ryan Grant? Yeah. No, uh, my mate now. like pointed out him Dave to Dave will us. walk up to his table or something. He'll be like at dinner with his missus and Dave's going to walk up and be like, hey. Yeah, pretty much. I, like, like I think he said he saw me. Same as he Magnuson. No, I'm not saying he um, didn't say that. Did I'm Magnuson saying, say that at well, as did well? Did he say hello? No, he didn't. Actually, he might have. I remember. At I Wednesdays, like, was it? <laughs> no, that was. He, I think he saw me getting a haircut, and I feel like I remember someone like waving to me or he something. Came me in thinking and got, he looks familiar, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't believe that. There's just I don't, I don't know. Too many How, fans out there of mine. Dave, everyone's been wanting to know what's it like in the hostel. Things are going well. Things are going quite smoothly. I think. You um, like okay. Now you've been there for like maybe two or three weeks now. What what's What's uh, hostel politics like? Um, look, it's mostly pretty calm. There's definitely like some little factions that go on because I guess there's a wide age range. So you get some- Oh, is there? Yeah, yeah. There's not a like full one, but I mean, my lovely partner and there's a few others who are like young, like around- Give us like a 20s. census age range. Like are they all in the same census bracket? No, 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 no. Cause it ranges from like 19 to like 50. Oh my god! Who's the fifty-year-old? That's um, Alex, who's the guitar teacher who lives in the shed. Uh, no, lives upstairs. I think the landlord lives in the shed, who's like mid late thirties. Who lives in the, Who lives in the Who lives in the garage? That's the landlord. Who, who lives, lives in, in the, the shed? shed? I don't think there's a shed. You said you there was said a there shed. Was a guy living I in might the shed. have been mistaken. There's a lot to remember. Tell you what, it sounds like that place. Like you'd find a. Fucking- who's the fifty-year-old? Guitar teacher living yeah. upstairs. Yep, and he's the one that does a lot of the cleaning um, and takes a lot of the responsibility around the place. Well, I he's think. the dad of the fucking hostel. Yeah. But, like, you know when you, you like, pull, like, part, like, you're in a shed and you're like, oh, you found a whole family of possums living in there? I wouldn't be surprised if there's other people that live there. You oh, the, dude, the garage where the landlord lives is fucked. There's like, Have you checked the attic? I haven't ever been upstairs. Well, I'd be... What are the room sizes like? Like, I think... How I mean, big is his house? It's three stories. Is it um, like, is it, would you say if you walked in there, right? Yeah. And one family lived there, would you be like, this house is fucking massive? Or would you be like, this is a big house? For one family, it would be like big, not fucking massive. But it's hard to tell because there's so much yeah, shit so in not, there. It's not there is big. so much shit in there. I'm getting the idea so of like as as it is. wet market vibes. Like just animals living on top of animals, on top of animals, on top of animals. You're getting Wuhan vibes. I'm getting Wuhan wet market vibes. Like, I'd have fucking... That was a video you don't unsee. What, the wet market? The wet market video. It doesn't look great, does it? No, it didn't. Why do they call them wet? Well, they're not dry. Sure, but like... They look... They're always hosing that shit down. Things pissing everywhere. They're wet. They're not dry. I... You know what? They're also not blue. So do we call them green markets? Like, what do we talk... What I mean is like, why is the... Why is the wetness and dryness the feature of the market? Uh, So I think, just on a quick deal, that... It has to do with because they keep like things cool, they have to keep it with ice and then the ice melts and it's wet everywhere. So it's just literally because it's wet. Mm. Like I said. But that's what I was trying to work out. Yeah, yeah. just because it's particularly wet. Yeah, but that's, wet. What I, that's what I said. Well, it's not. Yeah, you're, you're saying you're saying it's because it's not dry. Yeah. Yep. Right. But yep. there are, you know, there are so many so things that are and aren't. No, no. So it's wet. So that's why. So is this called a dry studio? Yeah. Ooh. You would say it's dry. Okay. Yeah. Well, is it called a dry studio or is it just called a studio? We, well, you do can, you call it? A dry studio. Well, so like if this, if this, this, the only reason this has got a, is a studio is because the main reason, like the main purpose of this, the main defining factor is like mics and shit. Okay, so would you say the defining factor of the market is that it's wet? Wet? Or would you say the defining factor is that there's animals in it? Well, it's a market. Right, but markets could sell fucking clothes. I don't think they just sell animals there, bro. Mm-hmm. See, we I, do, like I mean, it, you don't know. I'm a, I'd, I'd be happy to be illuminated. But to me, it was like animals fucking just stacked on each other, pissing and shitting in each other's mouths. Yeah, another reason they think is because, well, also like it's perishable goods. So it's not dry goods, it's wet goods, perishable goods. Also, there's live fish splashing around in tubs of water and also the blood and innards of slaughtered animals are also around. Sounds like a fucking shit A lot of wet things going on. I w- I w- so is this, does this sound like the place you, you're fucking... No, it does not at? sound like the place. I think people live 
very civilized and sounds like happier life the way than you, you probably imagine it. it. I would I I will say this while we're on the uh, the topic of living on top of each other and on the topic of shared housing. Mm. I'd like to send my thoughts and condolences out to the Towers community. Yeah. Thomas and I on grand final day were past alarming information that our beloved Towers, you could say where our friendship fostered and grew. Blossomed and bloomed. Blossomed. You could make a strong argument that the only reason the podcast exists is because because of Towers. Yep. We were considerably alarmed. Considerably. Considerably. Sound like Sean Connery. Uh, alarmed <laughs> that Towers no more. Towers getting fl- getting knocked down. Boarded up. The only thing I'll the only way I'll be sort of accepting of it is if they blow it up. Like a controlled demo. Oh, I th- it, 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 it reeks of a demo job. Tower 7 sort of shit. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Let's do some control. What demolition. were the two towers called? The Twin Towers. No, no, no. The, our Towers. They had names. Oh, fuck. Cottrell? Cottrell? Digging? And, mm. Or is that another place? No, that was... I've got no idea. No, it's wrong. I've asked the wrong person. Could you just Google that? I don't even know what you're talking about. What towers? Bathurst University. Uh, okay. Bathurst CSU. Campuses. Towers. CSU. Cottrell and... Was it Diggings? Maybe it was. I don't know. No, it wasn't. That doesn't sound right. Diggings was like a residence. Do we call Hamish? And Where see? fucking weirdos lived. Ham- well, ha- Hamish won't know. Let's give him a chance. Okay. Dial a friend. Don't tell Phone us, Dave. Don't scream it out. I want to see if you can get it. Phone a friend. It's Cottrell and something. Watch him just have his phone off, probably. Hello, <laughs> Hello, Haim. You're on the podcast here, bro, on speaker. How you doing? I'm good, brother. I'm at the zoo. Yeah, with my daughter. <laughs> with your family, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what enclosure are you looking at? Uh, the alpacas. Fucking <laughs> nice. Nice. Shout out to alpacas. Shout out to nice. alpacas. I uh, just got a quick oh, question. You. Do you remember what the names of the ta- of towers were, like the two towers in Bathurst? Cottrell and... Yeah, Heath, Heath and Cottrell. Hey. <laughs> Fucking hey. Okay, there you go. Because you know Towers is getting blown up? Getting, like, what, demolished? Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah, we found that out the other day. Uh, actually, someone did... That actually rings a bell now that it's all coming down. Mm. It it sounds like um, a good idea because that place was literally just, like, well, it was falling a pri- apart anyway. Well, it was a prison, but, I mean, it was our prison. Oh, I think it was. I think it's a bad idea, personally. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Uh, Anyway, ten points to fucking Gryffindor. Ten points to ten points to Heimendor. We didn't think you were going to get it. We didn't know it either, but we thought let's just call Heyman C. Um, you you get back to looking after my family. I will, mate. I'll see you tomorrow, will. bro. See you for dinner. Bye. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you for dinner. See you, boys, mate. Well, there you go. C two D two Heath. Is that what you were? It's also where I met Ella. So I've got a lot, a lot. I like that he mentioned me like this show first though right you know like, well we're on the podcast so no but i'm saying this is the thing that was most important i think it's fair to say yeah it's, it's fair to say yeah, well, yeah. i think it's look i'm, I'm not gonna say it on tape no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm not gonna have audio recordings of this mate. <laughs> c2d2 heath i think i was a1 b1 cottrell you were you were did you know that because i'm just guessing because of the where i sat in the like well it wouldn't like so i was c2d2 but i was up high if you were all cool yeah I did. and you were down low i was so i hope everyone's enjoying this you're probably not all i'm saying <laughs> is it meant a lot to us and it's getting torn down and that's devastating they came up with some bullshit about there being asbestos i thought it was made of bricks i don't know where the fucking asbestos yarn's coming from well it was definitely made of brick but i also wouldn't be at all shocked if they shoehorned a bit of fucking asbestos in there. I was like, me and Ella were laughing the other day about like how in every dorm, right, there was two bathrooms. They were all both unisex and the doors weren't that high. Yeah, but they also weren't low enough to see anyone shitting. So like, what's the problem? I'm just saying like, big gap at the bottom, big gap at top. Everyone's in there together when they could have separated them. Well, look, they could have, but you know what? They were probably ahead of their time because unisex bathrooms or genderless bathrooms are much more the norm now, and I don't mind. I'd love to sit next to some 
chick who's back, backing out a fucking monster. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what gets you out of the bed in the morning. Yeah, it is. You've said it many times. It's why I wake up. It's why you wake up to hear, yeah. so, to hear someone from the opposite sex backing one out. Backing one out. Or from no sex at all, backing one out. Yeah, no, no. A genderless, a genderless, a genderless dump, a genderless poo. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, are we, are we? I think we're at our wits' end. Well, I think maybe we're going off the rails a little bit. And does it have anything to do with the big day rosé? And look, this this pairs nicely because it seems like Louis arrived. That's Louis. Louis here. See you later. Bye. Bye. Um, big day rosé. Six big p.m. Big day rosé. Big day rosé. Six, six p.m. Big day rosé. Six p.m. Six p.m. Hello, sport. Shop. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>